Hi, and welcome to my YouTube video. I really, really appreciate you joining me for this. I know you have other things that you could be doing right now, but instead you're watching my YouTube video. So thank you so very much for taking a few moments out of your day to watch this YouTube video. And if you would, please go ahead and like, comment, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I would really, really appreciate it. It would help me out a lot as well. And so what I want to talk about in this video, this is part of a series that I've been putting together, and this is six steps to create an effective email autoresponder series. And in this video, I want to talk about step number five, write an autoresponder series that converts. And if your autoresponder and the emails that you're sending out with your autoresponder, if they're, if they're not converting your subscribers or actually really, um, you know, your prospects into subscribers, then maybe you need to make some adjustments or whatever. The end goal should be that, uh, that you, you know, that those subscribers or those prospects really who become subscribers, that they convert into sales if that's what you're promoting or, or whatever the final outcome is. So I'm going to talk about, again, write an autoresponder series that converts. And so one of the first things I want to talk about um, when, when you're writing your emails in your autoresponder, you want to focus on your subscribers. You want to focus on what they need, not what you need. Hey, let me tell you all about me. Let me tell you all about what I have. No, you want to focus on what do they need? What are their interests? And I'm going to break this down on, a, on some points here. So the first one is, you know, your content should define your goals and your audience. How? Identify your objective. Identify what it is you want to accomplish. What do you want to achieve with your autoresponder series? Now, this could be, um, for instance, increasing sales or nurturing, you know, new leads or perhaps promoting a product or a service. Um, and then you write your copy. You write the copy of your email that communicates this so that the reader will take action on the desired results. And if the action you want your reader to take isn't, isn't explicitly clear, then they won't move forward. They will not take action. But when you write your content, when you identify, when you identify what it is you want them to do, but then when you write your email, write in terms of their focus, their interest, what they want. And there's, there's an art to that, but it is something that you can do. Well, what's the next one? Well, the next one is understand your audience. Understand who it is that's on your list. Now, I know I've talked about this before. I'm not going to really get into it, but there's a, a strategy called an avatar. And... And again, you should have a clear avatar, your ideal subscriber. And like I said, I'm not going to go, you know, get into in this video what an avatar is. But again, an avatar should I simply identify who is your ideal subscriber. So you want to know who your subscribers are, and you want to know their pain points, their interests, and how your product or your service can help them. Always, and I can't say this enough, I, I know I may be sounding redundant, but it's so important. Always, always write your copy from the perspective of your subscribers and your readers' um, content or their point of view. It's not about you. It's about them. And a good a checklist when writing your copy uh, especially when you're focusing on them, on your subscriber, on your prospects. When you're doing that, a good checklist would be, for instance, what are the biggest pain points and struggles for your subscriber? What obstacles are they facing? What are the current goals of, of my subscribers? What is it they want to accomplish? You know, and, and again, you'll know all of this as you build a relationship with your audience, with those that are on your list. 
And why did that, why did, you know, why did that person, why did that prospect subscribe in the first place? What interested them to give you their name and email address? What caught their attention? You, you should, you should try and understand that and know that as well. And how, how can I solve their current problem, their current challenge? How can I satisfy their current interest with this email? Again, your content is, you know, you're writing your content to them. And then lastly, why should they even read your email? What is the big benefit for them? So this all feeds up into another point, understanding your audience. And what's the next point? Well, the next point, write attention grabbing um, uh, subject lines. And this is, a, this is a, a really, really, really big point because as you know, and, and I'm sure you do as well, people get 20, 30, 50, 100, 200 emails a day. And what's the first thing most people look at? The subject line, what is this email about? And many times that will determine whether or not they're going to click on it to open it or just say, oh, heck with this and hit delete. So that subject line is really important. And when writing subject lines that grab attention and entice subscribers to open the email, you want to, again, uh, address it in a way that's going to capture their attention. Uh, for instance, which uh, which subject line do you think would uh, would result in more open emails? Number one, get this great offer now. Okay, that doesn't tell me anything. Or how about access this strategy that will bring results today? Access this strategy that will bring results to you today. And the second one, that is probably going to get more open more emails open than the previous uh, subject line. So which headline would you choose? Which headline would you respond to? Get this great uh, great offer now or uh, access this strategy that will bring, bring you results today? Probably the second one. So again, write attention-grabbing subject, so, you know, subject lines. That's another point. What's the next one? Personalization. Oh my goodness, this is another. This is another big one. And how many of you uh, receive emails on a regular basis that says, "Hi, friend," or "Greetings, friend"? Who are they talking to? Well, they're certainly not talking to me. I mean, it, it is such a generic way to address an email. You know, use the subscriber's name. And like I said, I hate those emails that say, greetings, friend. It is so impersonal, and it's not engaging at all. You know, everyone loves the sound of their own name. Everyone loves, you know, seeing their, their name in an email. That captures their attention in an email. Also write your content that talks about the interests and the behavior of those on your list. Again, this is why you should know who's on your list. Why are they on your list? What are they interested in? So if your subscriber has indica indicated, yeah, um, has indicated <laughs> sorry, an interest in the world's greatest golf balls, then don't send them emails that talk about baby formula, or the best oil to use for your car, right to their interests, not to what you are promoting. Don't make the focus on what you're promoting, on what you're selling, on what you want them to do. Focus on what their interests are. Well, what's the next one? And this is, this is really, this is another important key. When writing your email, be clear and and concise. Keep your emails focused and to the point. Avoid being verbose and long-winded, so to speak. If what you're trying to convey isn't clear, your reader will not take action. A confused mind never takes action. Someone who is not clear, what is it you want me to do? What is it are you talking about? What, what is, you know, what are you trying to tell me? A confused mind or a cloudy mind, however you want to word it, 
they will not take action. So again, make sure your content is clear, concise, simple, and tr try not to cover one, two, three, four, five points. It, cover one point in your email, one subject. Keep it simple. Uh, you know, you've heard the expression K-I-S-S. -S, keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> I'm not saying you're stupid, but, but keep it simple. Keep it simple. Well, what's the next one? Well, the next one is value-driven. This is another great point. Make sure your email provides quality content that is valuable, informational, um, or a solution. Avoid, 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 avoid talking about buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. <sighs> buy my stuff syndrome. You know, people very rarely, if ever, respond to buy my stuff. They will respond to emails that have quality content. They talk about information they can use or talk about a solution that will help them with an obstacle or a challenge or something that they want to accomplish. The focus, again, needs to be on what will benefit your reader. Notice a, a pattern here. Notice a theme here. When you're doing your emails, make sure your emails is about them, not about you. And then the last one here is call to action. So you've laid out a great email. Your subject line is perfect. They Oh, they're interested. They click on your email because of your subject line. Your content talks about them. And I mean, by the end of your email, they're on the edge of their seat. And if you don't have a call to action... And you say, thank you very much for reading my email. And that's it. They're going to be kind of sitting like, okay, well, all right. And then they move on. You have to have, you should definitely put a call to action of some sort. Now, each email should have a clear and compelling call to action, a clear and compelling CTA that guides the subscriber on what you want them to do. If the action you want your reader to take isn't clear, e.g., click here or enter your name and email address or whatever action you want, to, if it's not clear, then they'll almost in every case take no action at all. You have to tell your reader what you want them to do. So this is the last point. And again, you know, these, these, are, these are points that will you know increase your open rate these are keys that again will um will help your email will help your autoresponder in the emails you send out in your autoresponder it will help them it will help them to uh take action and it will help to convert uh your emails your subscribers into into customers or that's you know again Going back to what the the uh, expected outcome is, what the outcome is, it, what if you want them to, to to buy your product or subscribe to your service? Again, um, converting a subscriber or a prospect into taking action that you want them to do. These are steps that again that will benefit you and that will help you tremendously in getting great conversions from your list. So. Hopefully you got value out of this, and um, and if you did, please do me a favor. Please go ahead, give me a thumbs up. Woo hoo! Uh, go ahead and comment because I always respond to my comments that that you leave usually within 24 hours. And go ahead and share this YouTube video. I would really appreciate it. And sub if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, again, that would benefit me a great deal. So thank you so very very much. And then in my next video, watch for it, will be the sixth and last step of the series, Six Steps to Create an Effective Email Autoresponder Series. That will be my last, uh, my last uh, email in this series of six emails. And to find out what that is, well, you're just going to have to wait and see what my email says. <laughs> no, but um, you have to go wait and see what the video says. But anyway, um, so I'll have that out to you here shortly. Again, thank you for watching my YouTube video. I really do appreciate it. You have a fantastic day.
And if there's anything that I could do for you, or if there's anything that you need help with, by all means, please let me know. And I look forward to seeing you again in my next video. Thanks so much, and you take care now.